This presentation concerns one of the greatest tragedies of our times. It concerns the suffering and death of hundreds of thousands of women and their babies in sub-Saharan Africa, in particular the district of Isiolo, Kenya. Kenya is a land of dramatic contrasts with its game-filled savannas, primal beaches, equatorial forests, and snow-capped mountains. But one of its most striking contrasts is that between its travel brochure images and the daily struggle, poverty, and starvation of many of its inhabitants. The most vulnerable of these are childbearing women and their children. Many women deliver at home in the bush with no medical or midwifery care or transportation to get to these services if they did exist. The traditional birth attendants who try to assist them have no idea how to spot or deal with complications. So delivery often results in agonizing pain, hemorrhage, or rupture of the uterus, often along with death of the baby and the mother. Part of the problem is described by Mercy Lobe, a traditional birth attendant who says, there are cases when the child presents with head or back. We squeeze the mother's womb to position the legs in the birth canal. It would be helpful if we could be trained to detect such complications before delivery so we can refer them for medical care. The suffering that so many young mothers endure, dying alone in terror while trying to deliver a baby in small huts or manyatas in isolated villages in Africa, a few at a time and unknown to the world, is unimaginable. When mothers die, their families disintegrate. They leave behind children whose survival rate decreases dramatically as they are frequently left alone. Fathers must often be away in search of land for grazing animals. In traditional cultures, the family is under constant threat of death. All mothers have a right to welcome their babies into the world with the aid of clean, safe delivery facilities and access to trained health professionals. In most of the Western world, these rights are taken for granted. While in many parts of Africa today, women bear children while suffering the effects of drought, starvation, tribal conflicts, and chronic diseases known to cause severe obstetric complications. In the developed world, the number of maternal and perinatal deaths, stillbirths, and birth injuries have been drastically reduced, while the developing world is still in the dark ages when it comes to obstetrical services. Of the 200 million women who are pregnant on our planet every year, the almost inconceivable number of 330,000 die, most of these in sub-Saharan Africa. This amounts to a global catastrophe on the scale of war. According to recent figures from the World Health Organization, 35% die from postpartum hemorrhage, 18% from hypertension, 18% from indirect causes such as HIV, anemia, malaria, and non-communicable diseases. 12% die from other direct causes. These include ectopic pregnancy, pulmonary embolism, obstructed labor, and sepsis. 9% die from abortion, both spontaneous and induced. Most of these deaths occur either in the third trimester, during labor and delivery, or one week postpartum. It has been shown that essential obstetric services can treat 91% of the causes of maternal mortality. Matercare calls this the 91% solution. While complications can occur unexpectedly during labor and delivery, it is astounding to think that 85% of these deaths can be anticipated early 
and prevent it with access to essential obstetrical services. These deaths are only the tip of the iceberg. For every death, about 30 more women suffer from the complications of delivering a baby with a pelvis that is too small for normal delivery due to malnutrition or chronic illness. This results in the horrifying lifelong condition of a ruptured bladder and or rectum known as obstetric fistula, which causes shameful and permanent incontinence. Shunned by husbands, families and communities, these women become social pariahs, cast out to wander alone, fending for themselves. Some turn to prostitution for survival. It is estimated that two million forgotten young women are now living with the pain and shame of this disability. And that obstetrical fistulae can be easily prevented and repaired with specialized surgery and nursing care. But there are few trained specialists to provide this service. In Canada, the risk of dying in childbirth is 1 in 10,000. The average survival rate in sub-Saharan Africa is 1 in 31. Yet, a tragedy of such proportions is mostly ignored by the international community. Causes such as AIDS and even wildlife protection garner more sympathy, attention and resources. It is as if the plight of mothers is somehow unimportant. But motherhood has special significance. In developing countries, it is often the most complete expression of womanhood. Mothers are the key to healthy families, and healthy families are the key to healthy and humane societies. Of the eight Millennium Development Goals put forward by the United Nations at the turn of this century, both the UN and the international health community admit that the fifth, which concerns improvement of maternal care, is the most neglected. According to a British Medical Journal article of July 2007, at the present rate of progress, the fifth millennium development goal will not be met for 275 years, that is, in 2282, and not in 2015 as intended. In 1995, a group of concerned obstetricians was challenged to breathe life into maternal health care, and from this, Matercare International was born. Its mission is to provide in practice a culture of life and hope and a professional voice that promotes the dignity of all mothers, their unborn children, and the obstetricians who care for them. Dr. Robert Wally is the founder and executive director of MCI, whose motto is Mothers Matter. MCI is passionate about the rights of mothers and tireless in its quest to improve conditions for childbearing women. I asked Dr. Wally about some of the obstacles in getting international support for this cause. I think the main one has been this over-reliance on what's called reproductive health, which is abortion of birth control. And uh, to us, I, don't know, I think to everybody who's experienced in obstetrics, they're irrelevant, aren't they? when we look at the causes of uh, maternal deaths. Uh, so that's been the main thing. And anyway, isn't it somewhat egregious to suggest to an African mother that the best thing that we can offer you is to kill your baby so that you'll survive? I mean, you wouldn't say that here, and I don't think you should say that uh, to them. So in a sense, this is a sort of a violence, isn't it, against women, where it's a question of omission here, not commission. You're not punching them in the face or assaulting them, but it's just as violent because it's something you should have done, knew you should have done it, but didn't. So it's, it's uh, violence by omission. Dr. Wally feels that the burden lies with a number of organizations. I think the international community, that means governments, they're international agencies, 
uh, a lot of, uh, of the larger international health organizations who seem to have lost creativity. They've lost initiative. And there's also, I think, uh, a lack of compassion and political will. Uh, because this could be easily resolved, but it hasn't been. It's just been allowed to drag on and on and on. I, I think governments have to listen. They have to see what the situation is. They have to be creative. They have to be proactive. Uh, and they, they have to be there for the long term. They all seem to be looking at sort of uh, an easy fix and then they can leave. Uh, when all of this has been going on for years, it's not going to be a short, quick solution. I think to illustrate the point I've just made, uh, one can do that with uh, an article that was in The Lancet back in April of uh, last year when they said, uh, and I'll quote it, to save that most lives, care needs to be delivered at all levels of the health system and implemented with proven techniques that target key healthcare interfaces. That means you've got to provide the services. Dr. Wally and his organization have addressed this urgent problem by developing a model of comprehensive obstetrical care for poor rural areas. The model was first tried in Nigeria and improved in Ghana in the 1990s. Responding to a call for help from the concerned Catholic bishop of the area, it is currently being introduced to a rural area of Kenya, the district of Isiolo. Isiolo is a small isolated community about 500 kilometers from Nairobi. Here, maternal deaths are the highest in sub-Saharan Africa, and there has been severe drought for about five years. The drought has resulted in dried up terrain and roads, and lack of water and food for people and their animals. Malnutrition and the chronic conditions that are exacerbated or result from it are rampant. The area also continues to be plagued by intertribal conflict, which causes forced transience as families search for safe ground. High blood pressure in pregnancy, or also they could be hypertensive, and when they are hypertensive. Dr. Jane, the Deputy Minister of Health for the Isiolo District Hospital, outlines a number of problems leading to complications, such as malaria high blood pressure, diabetes, and HIV, which can all lead to death. She describes a case where the woman was bleeding before delivery for two days before transportation could be found, so that by the time she got to the hospital, they were unable to save the baby or the mother. Uh, before she's born, he or she's born. Also, the mother herself can also die. The MCI model of maternity services takes into account the local conditions and culture while providing accessible prenatal, natal, and postnatal care in isolated communities. Dr. Wally explains how this model is being applied presently in Isiolo. Essential maternal health services are made accessible to isolated villages. Consideration is given not only to the obstetrical causes of death, but to the circumstances that increase the risk of death, such as lack of communication and transportation, poor roads, neglected infrastructure, poverty, malnourishment, insufficient medical services of any kind, and a societal system that insists women seek their husband's permission to receive services. Added to this is a general neglect by local authorities. Our model of comprehensive rural maternity care revolves around a small 30-bed district hospital. The hospital will provide treatment for life-threatening obstetrical complications and for medical conditions such as malaria, HIV and anemia. This service will be carried out in conjunction with comprehensive prenatal care and the availability of caesarean section and blood transfusion. Only essential drugs will be used. Green energy will be used, derived from solar power, water from a borehole, 
or collected from roofs during the rainy season. Biogas will heat water for the laundry and also be used for cooking. Okay. Services for uncomplicated cases will be provided in six rural maternity centres which will be much closer to the villages. These will be staffed by trained midwives who will provide prenatal care for normal pregnancies and early referral to hospital for mothers with complicated conditions. Lucy, a community health care worker, underlines the necessity for a proper maternal health service. She says it would greatly assist women in the rural areas who deliver at home, as right now they are cared for by untrained personnel who can do little to prevent the deaths of babies and mothers when complications arise. The hospital opened in June of 2012. We've already opened the first parish clinic near the village of Murti, about 225 kilometers from Misiolo. We now also have operating a fully uh, equipped emergency transport vehicle with trained staff who can resuscitate and transfer a mother to the hospital quickly and safely. The hospital and clinics will be linked by cell phones to the emergency vehicles, which can go directly to a mother who's suffering from a life-threatening condition. Motorbike ambulances are being introduced for use between clinics and villages. A good example of how the model respects local cultural customs and promotes dignity for childbearing mothers is the provision of modern maternity waiting homes or maniatas named after their village huts within the hospital and clinic compounds. These enable mothers from remote areas to care for themselves or have family members care for them while waiting for delivery. We, we train the uh, doctors and midwives in essential obstetrical techniques. Traditional birth attendants are being educated to identify and refer high-risk mothers to the clinic early in pregnancy. Personal trained in natural family planning methods will also be available at the main maternity unit. There are also staff in the postnatal clinics who can administer the necessary immunization for babies and educate parents about nutrition. Project Isiola so far has saved eight mothers since June of 2010. The first mother was aged 20 with her first child, which was delivering at home when complications occurred. Labor was not progressing and then she began to hemorrhage. Relatives brought her to the nearest clinic at Murti, from which the hospital was notified. Two trained midwives were dispatched with the emergency vehicle to the clinic the next day. Unfortunately, the baby had died in utero and the mother was near death. She was resuscitated and transfused on the way to the hospital and on arrival, she was directly taken for a cesarean section. On her recovery, the young mother and the grandmother expressed enthusiastic gratitude to the Marta Care team. There is obviously a dire need for these services, and our goal is to save one life at a time by providing what we call the 91% solution. That is, essential obstetrics that will prevent 91% of maternal deaths. There have been a number of other instances of both mothers and babies being saved since the service began operating, and the reaction of the whole community has been jubilant. At the opening ceremonies of the clinic in Murti, the gratitude of the community was obvious. We've received generous support from donors in Canada, Australia, the US, uh, Poland, um, and that's helped us build the hospital but contributions are going to be needed for the operating costs. And they have to come from governments, from mission agencies, fraternal service organizations, and also individual donors. 
and from other church-related foundations. Providing such uh, support would require unprecedented cooperation between international aid agencies, uh, church-inspired NGO foundations in cooperation with their African partners. In keeping with the compassionate services they have been known for responding to this crisis would provide them with a golden opportunity to show they truly care about the needs of poor mothers. When the world realized the full extent of the AIDS pandemic, a special fund was created for prevention and treatment, which still exists today, and rightly so. If the world is really committed to solving maternal mortality and morbidity, then it will have to fund essential obstetrics rather than abortion or injectable contraception. This funding should go towards the 91% solution. Perhaps Mother's Day could become a day for the world community to establish a special fund to solve this global catastrophe, rather than just being another sentimental commercial day. After all, we are supposed to love and care for our mothers every day. Some may argue that developing an emergency fund for neglected mothers under threat is unrealistic. But mothers and children the world over are entitled to a life of hope and basic survival. All of us are challenged to respond to the needs of the poor, especially the needs of poor mothers in sub-Saharan Africa. Mater Care International is based on the recognition of the sacredness of human life as the starting point for a moral vision of society. To this end, Dr. Wally and his team have recently drawn up a Charter of Rights for Mothers to recognize their unique contributions and enhance the dignity of mothers everywhere. This charter would ensure that every mother has a right to her dignity and that of her unborn child through treatment and care by skilled professionals in clean, safe facilities through all stages of childbearing including comprehensive pre- and postnatal care and education. The Charter also specifies her right to freedom from religious and social discrimination and the right to refuse diagnosis or treatment not intended to ensure the survival of her child or that coerces her into sterilization. The powers that be must take responsibility for protecting the fundamental creative contributions of motherhood. Mothers really matter.